And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premier podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Let's get into some things. Wait, hold on. Uh, what, do we, what, do we, what do I do usually? Uh, I saw Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. It's fantastic. I can't believe that movie was better than the first one. The first one was near perfect, uh, with the exception of how I own that movie digitally and I've seen it on my own multiple times and once a week just like the Harry Potter movies are played on TNT or Freeform or Sci-Fi once a week and and Lord Lord Law and, Law, Law, Law and Order of the Rings <laughs> come on <clears throat> uh, 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 j- just like just like those movies Law and Order Lord of the Rings TV show just like those are, are played Every single day, probably. Uh, FX plays uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse every single day. Anyway, let's get into this. Also, I think every Spider-Man property, from video game to comic to TV to cancel TV shows, with the exception of the Neil Patrick Harris, the MTV TV show, I believe every single Spider-Man is referenced. It's fantastic. And I don't. And I'm I'm tired of superhero movies. Let's get on with this. SAG after has uh, they they voted for the strike authorization. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna blaze right through what I got going on because I have a, a metric crap ton of things to talk about. SAG after they voted for the uh, the strike authorization. I have an article here that says ready to vote for it, but uh, they call for the strike authorization vote ahead of June seventh. AMP TP talks. That was last week written by Gene Mattis over at Variety. And then, the, as the strike continues, there were upfronts. There were the upfronts. This comes from Variety, written by Brian Steinberg. Sports and news were the stars of the upfront showcases. So we had a lot of, especially Warner Bros. Discovery, a lot of ABC, a lot of uh, uh, Paramount. And Fox just focusing on reality shows, sports news, things of that nature, because they weren't going to have scripted shows. And in terms of ABC, no scripted shows this coming fall. Everything has been pushed. Most shows for most networks have been pushed well into next year. Oh, there's a game on sale on Steam, Road Legacy 2. So that was that. And, uh, oh, there's something about, I don't know why I skipped over this. <laughs> this should have been first. <laughs> there's a fight over Hulu. This comes from Wall Street Journal, written by Jessica Tunkel. Inside Disney and Comcast fight over the future of Hulu. If you didn't know, Disney and Comcast are the last owners of Hulu. Hulu started out basically as a neutral place for Fox, ABC, CBS, uh, I believe CW at the time and um, NBC to put their shows as f- prior to like just a way for people just to watch things if they didn't have a um, a DVR. And I loved it. I loved it. It was a fantastic idea. I loved having a free way to watch shows, especially like especially in college when you didn't have a DVR. We had cable though. Every every uh, dorm in my in my college had cable. The expensive dorms, the not expensive dorms. It it was fantastic. All you had to do was bring a TV, plug it up, and you got cable, basic cable, Cartoon Network, CNN, things of that nature. I'll name a non Warner Brothers property, TNT, <laughs> out of Disney Channel. Uh, and then in order to get premium cable, you had to pay for it. I mean, from your family, you know, you had to go to your family and get like HBO Go or whatever, or HBO Now. No, HBO Go was when, when I was around. Uh, yeah, there's that. That's really strange for a college to all have like every single one of the cable, right? Because I can't, I don't think a lot of schools have that. Anyway, what's looking, what, what it's looking like in the next couple of years, uh, within the next year or so, is that Comcast Disney will have to talk to Comcast about selling off the rest of uh, their ownership 
which is I think 25% to Disney. Bob Iger said in an earning calls this month that the companies have had cordial discussions and he has signaled his desire to give consumers a single streaming offering that includes Hulu content. Uh, CEO Comcast, Comcast CEO Brian Roberts told investors at a conference days uh, at a conference days later that quote the majority case is that Disney will buy Comcast stake. Hulu's value said should be based on the hypothetical idea that it would be put up for sale in an auction for anyone, including any major media or tech company, to buy it. He wants more money essentially. I I think I, again I think Hulu should have remained this neutral place. I I understand the money thing. I understand, like, just having a place to have next day television. That's why we have NBC Universal and Comcast. That's why they put everything over on Peacock as a way to drive people over to Peacock. So you can that way you can watch all of Law and Order uh, SVU the next day when it when it airs. If airs on Thursday, you watch it on Friday morning. Then again, they they canceled Grand Crew and Young Rock. So I don't know what I'm going to be watching besides SNL and law and order on Peacock as my, uh, as my subscription runs out, runs out. I got $20 for a year. I was really excited about that. And, uh, yeah, here we go. So there was, uh, the next day TV, they they have a, they have a little time lag going on. Then the Fox deal was a big, was a really huge moment for them. Disney acquiring, Fox assets, which included Hulu in 2017, laying off 9,000 people in the process. Uh, and then Peacock, obviously everything was pulled. Again, we'll, so we'll see, we'll see this movement. I, I, I can only imagine that, I, I think I saw that, it, uh, that Hulu's worth 27, uh, hold on, oh, let me, let me, let me, before I say a number, let me please put a real number to it. 27 billion. Yep, that's exactly what I saw, and that is exactly what it, it probably is. Like. So it can it can be lowered. No, it can be valued rather no lower than twenty seven point five billion under the pact between the companies. It's not jump change, but also that's not as much as you know compared to its competitor, Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever. And Disney Plus is a competitor for them. I want I that makes me think. He said a single offering. I Iger indicated that there's a single offering. Um, for for streaming, I wonder if that means making bringing Hulu into Disney Plus into Disney Plus fold, which I can see happening, which they are doing this year by bringing Hulu projects, Hulu shows, and movies over to Disney Plus just to have them there for the interim. I can see that happening. I do think Hulu again. If it's not going to have the NBC and the ABC and all that stuff, if it's not going to have all that, well, I mean, it's going to have ABC stuff. Um, but if it's not going to have, if it's not going to be that that one place that everyone goes to for the next day stuff, I do think it should remain a separate entity because Hulu and Disney Plus are different offerings. There are, I mean, I'm sure you can go to any family out there right now that has three streaming services. And let's get, let's give them Netflix. Let's say they have Disney Plus, and then a third one. It could it can range anywhere between Apple TV Plus, Peacock, Paramount, or Hulu. Like, what are the chances that they have Hulu when it when it's put up against Apple TV Plus because it came with your Beats headphones, or Paramount Plus? Because you guys uh, really want to, you guys are huge Star Trek fans, or or you 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 love Nickelodeon, or you just you just love the option, or or Max. I should throw Max in there too. It, it's things like that, and if and if you are if you are a person who has the option, if you say, hey, I only want three services, and Netflix is the big one, and then Disney Plus is the other thing you love. Then what? Then what's to say, you know, you're not going. You're going to get Hulu. I would go for Max in that situation, or I would go for Paramount Plus. The refrigerator said it would go for Ice. All right, this next story comes from The Verge. This is written by Sean Hollister. Read the emails. 
colon. Valve helped Nintendo kick the Dolphin emulator off Steam. We're in the throes of Summer Game Fest now that E3 is over with for now. It'll come back, I assume. Nintendo put out a, DM, a DMCA request takedown to, to Valve and the creators of the Dolphin emulator. If you know what the Dolphin emulator is, it is a... Uh, I'll pull up my phone here. Here's my phone. There's a timer. It is, I'll go to the gaming section. It is an app that you can have on your phone, you can have uh, on your computer, you can have on your Steam Deck, whatever. I don't have any games downloaded right now. But you can have ROMs in here. So let's say, uh, what's a game? Simpsons Hit and Run, which I, for the life of me, cannot get to run on Dolphin Emulator. Only on the PS2 emulator. Not that I'm saying I have an emulator. <laughs> Not on my Steam Deck. Not not whatsoever. <laughs> it does not have all the Pokemon games. <laughs> Save for the Switch stuff. Um, but it, it, So essentially, emulator is, it takes ROMs, the games themselves, and runs them on different things. So you can run them on computer, phone, whatever. That, that can help run them. Uh, and they've been going, they've been around for years. There's no stopping ROMs. There's no stopping emulators. There was an official release for the Dolphin emulator, which you can already get on Mac, on PC, from the Dolphin website directly. But if you're a person who wants to get it on Steam for some reason, then, then this is going to be an option too. Nintendo blocked the emulator from making its way to Steam. And as it turns out, Valve, the company that is in charge of Steam was the one that let the Nintendo know. I was going to say Disney. Nintendo is the Disney of the uh, the gaming industry. Except there's one, one of those companies that I, I still like. I like Disney. It's fine. The Nintendo I love. So Valve, while they were allowing Dolphin to be created for Steam... They leaned over to Nintendo and said, hey, uh, you should, look, before this blows back on us, you should check this out. They're snitching. There's, you can read the letters yourself. And, uh, and it just, what, I don't, I don't know what Valve gets from this. I mean, either way, they were just caught in the middle. Nintendo wants you to buy their products, but you should also, Nintendo, have a way for us to buy these products without having to go to eBay and spend a hundred dollars on uh, Pokemon Soul Silver or Heart Gold. Because if I can just get an M, if I can get a ROM, I'm gonna throw it there on the Steam Deck or on my phone. It's so strange having your phone and playing Pokemon X or Pokemon Y. I'm just saying. Now, emulators are technically illegal. I have no idea how to get them or ROMs. I ain't got no idea know how to do none of those. <laughs> but this is this is Valve saving its own butt in the end. And there's more to it. Nintendo could sue Valve and then they would win. You know, I don't know if they would, you know, I, I would say they would. They would win. But there you go. All right, let's move on. Spotify is doing layoffs. This comes from Variety written by Todd Spangler. Spotify is laying off 200 employees in reorg of its podcast division. Now, if I remember correctly, I'm looking, I'm looking directly at the camera if you're watching the video. If I remember correctly, this story is that they're doing layoffs and they're combining Gimlet and the other... Uh, company that they bought. The 200 employees represent about 2% of the audio streamers worldwide workforce. The layoffs in the podcast group come after Spotify cut 6% of its overall headcount earlier this year and saw the exit of Don Ostroff, chief content and advertising business officer who previously headed Spotify's business. Let me triple check. Yes, 
Spotify will merge its podcast, podcast, and Gimlet groups into a renewed quote a renewed Spotify Studios operation, which I assume they will call Spotify Studios. That will or or something like uh you know Gimcast. It, I mean they wouldn't bring those names together. They would get rid of the the names altogether. Um, but uh, it's gonna it's gonna bring those groups together. They podcast and Gimlet produce originals like the Journal. Science versus serial killers, all these other stuff. The Ringer, headed by Bill Simmons, will remain separate and continue producing programming across sports, culture, and tech. I, I, I wonder what kind of because the the Ringer really hasn't been affected by changes at Spotify since it was brought to the company. I, I'm, I'm, I'm under. I wonder what, how that, how that negotiation happens. Or is it so so separate that, you know, podcasts and Gimlet? I assume those are more learning podcast networks, where like learning and the and the serial killer stuff. But that's not culture and sports, and tech. I guess. Spotify canceled eleven shows uh, last year around some time. They join a number of other companies laying people off. Paramount, LinkedIn, Vice Media, Clubhouse, BuzzFeed, Roku, EA, EA Sports, uh, Warner Music Group, NPR, CW, Amazon, Meta. There's more. Take two. Show t- uh, Showtime, Series XM, CNET. CNET did 50% layoffs? Did I know that? That's impossible. Also, I misspelled layoffs. Oh, my friggin' butts. Wow. 50% of its news and video staff. That explains why I am not seeing a lot of videos on their YouTube channel. That is a lot of people. That's after the AI thing, where it was found out that they were... Uh, publishing stories written by AI, AI essentially. There's more to it than that. Whew. Oh my God, fifty percent of people. Jesus. See, that's owned by Red Ventures. It, it used to be owned by uh, uh, Paramount. I don't think they're still owned by Paramount. Let me double check that. Paramount. Nope. I don't see it on there. Oof, it's insane. Fifty percent. No one else is doing that much. I mean, Meta laid off ten thousand people, but that's probably like you know seven percent of their. That's still a lot of people, though. That's still a lot of people. Don't get me wrong. Bill Simmons will continue as managing director of The Ringer, which Spotify acquired in 2020, and head of podcast innovation and monetization. Hmm. Again, I, I he must be saving their hides. Hit the ringer's heights on that one. And finally, to separate two stories, Chris Lit licked, licked, let go from CNN as the boss. If you listen to, and I don't know why you would, but if you listen to the other podcast LinkedIn logs that I host, uh, you will see me kind of go off on a little bit of a prolonged tangent. Uh, There's a lot of articles that really point to what the problems were, but I'll get, I'll, I'll summarize what I can for you. So there was a, an Atlanta piece from the Atlantic written by Tim Alberta that came out two weeks ago. Uh, It took him a couple of months to write and he got a lot of unprecedented access to uh, Chris Licht, who is, he was who was the the CEO of CNN. Now, Licht comes from, uh, and if I say Licht, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, Licht comes from Paramount, where he was in charge of Stephen Colbert's Late Show. He was the showrunner for that. Uh, I for, I don't know what his job was before that. Quite frankly, I didn't start paying attention to him until he came and righted the ship that was. The Colbert Late Show because that was a train wreck to watch. Because Colbert was the was the showrunner and the host and the head writer and all this stuff. 
or executive producer, all this stuff. Anyway, and then after he was there for a couple of years, he went over to CBS Mornings, which he renamed CBS This Morning. And they did a lot of other stuff behind the scenes. <laughs> you know, post Charlie Rose era, everything changed. Now, fast forward, David Zaslov hires him when uh, Zaslov takes over uh, Warner Bros. after Discovery buys the assets. David Zaslov hires him to be CEO. Licht comes from a background of news. So yes, this should work. In this piece from The Atlantic, it is, it paints him as one of the most insane sounding people to run a company. Uh, he was there, the Donald, I mean, on top of the Donald Trump town hall, on top of programming miscues, on top of uh, just way too much zaniness happening, way too many moving pieces over at CNN, especially in a period of time where news has to be trusted. Uh, a shift, uh, a shift of focus from left of center to directly center, which I have no problems with. But there's, but there's a lot more to that. Uh, th- there, like it was just too much going on, and even, even licked himself. This comes from the Hollywood Reporter, written by Alex Weprin. He told his staff, CNN's chief tells staff, "quote I should not be in the news after quote meltdown magazine profile." And if you and if again, if you look at that, if you read that Atlantic piece, fifteen thousand words, it really does not paint a good picture of Flick. He seems like a he seems like a a, a friggin' maniac. Uh, this is a guy who I respect. I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to. I do I do think he did really good work with CBS Mornings. I think he did great work with Colbert's Late Show. That's why that show leads in its in its demographic for late night. And he made CBS Mornings able to compete with Today Show. I don't even care about Good Morning America because I I do think that those people have never spoken to each other ever. <laughs> Robin Roberts. <laughs> Michael Strahan, George Stephanopoulos, and the rest of the people that are always coming in and out of that place because Robin, Michael, and George are never there for an entire week together. It's true. At least I've never seen them there for an entire week together. There were text chains uh, talking about the piece. There were slacks, emails all over the place. Zaslov... Albert had offered was offered a statement from Zaslav, but the Atlantic did not initially run with it. And then they finally posted it to the story a couple of days later, or day, the next day rather. But it was over. It was a, a mis uh, miscued oversight from uh, the editorial team because they got it the day before, whatever their excuse was. They finally added the statement. Zaslav says CNN is a very important business for us, and in fact, we believe that nothing we do is more important. Lick's progression, a top CNN was captured by the Atlantic, played out in multiple acts. As I, as I said from CBN, CNN, this, uh, CBS, this, ugh. from the launch of CNN this morning, and then uh, the Don Lemon thing, the, the Donald Trump thing, how they covered Donald Trump. The issue is, and we'll get into this, uh, to the centrist thing now, CNN is supposed to be the news of everybody. The problem is when, when you're there, there's the news, there's the truth and the news, and then there's lying and trying to make that news. And what a network like Fox news does is they lie and they try to make that news or they try to make something out of nothing. And what CNN does, and it may seem like CNN was turning into MSNBC doing editorial things. And while that may be, partially true while there were a lot of not a lot uh while there were a few editorialized stories and a lot and and some people wearing their their political beliefs on their sleeves i i would probably say there's you know just a small percentage of that whereas the largest percentage the rest of that was going to actually telling the news and telling the truth and that happened to be donald trump and his cronies are horrible people and they're doing horrible things and we are reporting the news. 
And and Zaslov, who I suspect, like Bob Chapek, gave money to the 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 right wing freaks, which Chapek did. But I suspect that these that these people uh uh I, I suspect that he had something to do with the centrist turn and then also just kind of just turning CNN into um a skeleton of what it was. I like I, I can only think that Chris Chris was following orders. I feel like like part of it was him, you know, part of this changing up the nine PM hour and and, and, and having Anderson Cooper do the whole story, which is like a, a 60 minute type deal on CNN, but he's still doing 60 minute stuff on top of his Anderson Cooper tonight shows or whatever. And then uh, uh, the, and this morning and all that stuff. But the, but I, I assume that shift was also large in part due to David Zaslav. Now, Jeff, Jeff Zucker, who was the previous CNN uh, uh, CEO, who was let go because he had uh, not an aff- an affair, but he had uh, he was he had a relationship with Allison Golist, who was the CNN's former chief communications person or communications chief, uh, and and he was at a um, a conference where he's talking to students. This is written by Benjamin Mullen over at uh, New York Times. Could Jeff Zucker fix CNN? He seems to think so. Where he did not hold back about the current leadership of CNN. He was very candid about that whole situation. This is and this is before Chris was fired. Lick, Licht was fired. He's also he was also candid about uh, the AT and T stuff, the former parent company. He was talking about Jason Keylar, who was the Warner Media chief executive uh, prior to Zaslov. His criticisms have come particularly an opportune time for Warner Bros. Discovery. Uh, executives at uh, Warner WBD believe Ms. Mr. Zucker is uh, waging a proxy war against Mr. Licht, undermining his leadership from afar, according to three people familiar, familiar with their thinking. And I feel like the people that they talk to for this article are those who are under, who were under Chris and under Zaslov, and they have no affiliation or allegiance to Zucker in the first place. There may be tensions between the two of them, between Zaslov and uh, Zucker. The Z brothers. In March, Mr. Zaslov visited CNN's Manhattan headquarters and criticized Mr. Zucker's leadership of the network in a meeting with Mr. Lick's lieutenants, according to someone at WBD. In the meeting, Mr. Zaslov told CNN execs that Mr. Zucker's gripes, which had made their way to him, were ironic given that Mr. Zucker had once remarked that Mr. Licht was the one executive who could do the job if he ever left the network. Zaslov's been uh, throwing things back. I, it, just, it just all seems nasty. Now, again, prior to Licht being fired, this is written by the New York, New York Times. This is, I believe... Two days before, John Coblin, Benjamin Mullen, Chris Licht is a C- of CNN faces a crisis. Here's why, and they and they get into ba- uh, just a, a good list of what what the issue was with Licht. Programming miscues and ratings woes. For the past 13 months, Licht has had again I told like issues with this 9 p.m. hour. The more recently, they've been doing now. Caitlin Collins, whom I am very attracted to, is very true. Uh, the only reason I watched CNN this morning, and now there's no reason for me to watch it, is taking over the 9 p.m. hour. Uh, but in the in the meantime, they've been filling out that time slot. Again, it's 24 hours news. They've been filling out that time slot with town halls. Again, start first starting with Donald Trump, then Nikki Haley, Mike Pence. Uh, I assume we're going to have the rest of those uh, uh, idiots who are running on the right side, uh, as well as uh, tonight is Chris Christie. A town hall. Do we need a 9 p.m. town hall? The experiments haven't been working. They've been shifting people in and out of different time slots, people on different shows. Um, it, it's just been tough. And then there's also the Don, Don Lemon and Morning News show stuff. Uh, now we're seeing two people. We saw we saw Don leave. Now we're seeing Caitlin leave. And now Poppy's going to be there with a rotating gaggle of people. Uh 
again, they just don't know what to do. And also that show, that show has no identity. What, what today's show and Good Morning America and CBS This Morning have are they are they're there for the common person to wake up and watch and get the news in that first hour, technically that first half hour, but that first hour, get that news, and then uh, in that second hour, get some fun, entertaining things, get deals, get uh, uh, CBS This Morning has uh, uh, the, the long form stories that are akin to um, uh, Sunday morning. Uh, and and then and then Good Morning America. I don't I don't watch it past eight o'clock. <laughs> but though, but they're there for people to wake up and get the news, get the weather from the get the local weather, and get and have some fun. And then for CNN this morning, they're on from I think six to nine, and uh, right, <laughs> they're on from six to nine, and they're essentially reading the same seven stories every hour. But they also have these really good interviews that I, I think uh, from from people who are a part of these stories or from experts. And I, and I think that's what really works for them. Um, the problem is that they had three people on that morning desk. One was obsessed with sports and would only uh, get excited when it came to sports. One hated women. And the other one is Poppy Harlow, who's there for the ride, baby. <laughs> They were all good broadcasters. They had nothing in common. Here's a picture I saw with uh, the the person who likes sports is Caitlin. She'd only get excited about college sports. And then uh, 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 then the other one was Don Lemon who hates women. Don Lemon hates women. Sue me. I dare you. I got nothing. Uh, I saw a picture of them, Poppy, Don, and Caitlin with uh, uh, Chris Licht at a uh, New York Knicks game. And it was just, why, like who, that'd be, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like those old, those very old bad jokes about, it's like a, a, a rabbi, a priest, and uh, a, 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 a third stereotype walk into a bar. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a comedian. I only talk to them sometimes. I don't know. We also saw shrinking profits from CNN, or CNN also saw shrinking profits. Uh, last year, CNN only had about generated about seven hundred and fifty million dollars in profit, with profit, which is down from one point two five billion in that previous year. That number also that seven hundred and fifty also includes the write down of CNN Plus, of two hundred million, the one time losses for that. I don't know if you can hear the uh, this car alarm going off outside, but. It's in the garage. I'm right next to my garage, and you can just, it's just like reverberating. And it's a cartoon one. It's an old, it's a, it's a, it's the, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> and then finally, Chris Lick out at CNN, leaving network at a crossroads. Written by John Coblin, Benjamin Mullen, Michael M. Grinbaum, and James B. Stewart. Nothing like four white guys writing for the New York Times. And then finally, we have uh, this from Variety, written by Brian Steinberg. David Zaslov likes to gut cable network. CNN is an easily model. And this is just a, a really good take on the the miss the missteps that have happened with Zaslov, Licht, and CNN. What 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 Zadzlov is good at is creating things cheaply. And that's why we have people like me and a lot of other people who were laid off from the company because uh they want they they have to write they wanted to write down these, you know, a billion dollars, a couple five billion dollars in losses, uh and write down write offs and everything like that. And then also think that they can continue running Cartoon Network and CNN and TNT for the same amount of money in HBO too, in HBO and in Max rather, uh, HBO and Max, <laughs> uh, and think they can they can run all of those networks the same way they run Discovery and TLC and Food Network and HGTV. 
which you can't. Those are, there's, those are two different things. You, you can't, you can't have, you can't create, you know, the Eric Andre show in succession and, and, uh, uh, Craig of the Creek and, 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 but, and try to make them for the same amount of money it takes to shoot seven years worth of Dr. Pimple Poppers and, uh, my fat teenage husband or something like that. I don't know. Um, there's more shows, a thousand pound sisters. And it's and it's not to say that you know either one is better, but obviously the scripted stuff is better. <laughs> but you can't CNN CNN. There's a there's a lot for CNN. You have to send people. You have to have correspondence in Bangladesh. You have to send people to England. You have to have people out there able to tell the stories of the world. It can't all just be eighteen hours of news, and then six hours of somebody repeating the news that happened in the day before. The makeover has not been going well. Zaslov's premise for the, uh, the, the, the Trump thing, he told staffers, CNN staffers in March, democracy is under assault everywhere. We don't agree on a lot of, a lot of this country. That a Republican would say that, but we need to be able to hear each other, and that's the mission that Chris is on. Fired. That's the mission that you all are on. Again, he's trying to make it a centrist thing, and it just is. It's not working, and it's not going to work when you're trying to force it in that direction like that. Now, there there is a way I believe that it can turn centrist without it looking like Fox News. Uh, diluted and by Fox News diluted I mean like uh, you know giving Trump a platform to speak and putting and putting people that support him in the crowd the 2024 elections coming up they had to figure this out within the next couple of months I would say I say by November they have to figure this out because we're already ramping up. We already have 18 people, uh, 7, 14, 14 or 15 or 18 people or so, almost 20 people on the Republican side running, announcing they're running for president. CNN is projected to see 2023 ad revenue fall about 5% to $562.6 million, according to Kagan, a market research unit of S&P Global Intelligence, largely to decline in ratings. What's going to get people to come back to CNN? And it's not it's not just trust. Because they if they if they if it was trust, then they would just stay with MSNBC and Fox News. Or if you are a person that likes Newsmax and ONN and all that stuff, then you would stay with that. But there has to be a way to attract people back. That's not going around and canceling Lisa Ling's uh, show or Stanley Tucci's show. Because that doesn't help you. That's that's just, that's just saying I need more money for myself. Because you know Zaslav took took home two hundred fifty million dollars for doing nothing, for being a white man, and uh, people were laid off. But there's a, there's a way to be centrist and also make great programming. And it takes making one step at a time. If I'm going to, if uh, I have, I have Nova, I have a cat. If I'm going to feed her something new, I'm not going to just stop feeding her the thing that she knows. I'm going to feed her a little bit at a time. And then eventually I will migrate over to that new thing. You don't start two new morning shows. You don't start a new 6 a.m. show and a new 9 a.m. show. And then just toss together six people and then expect people to jump on. And because there's dynamic camera movements and new angles and, and new uh, 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 graphics and everything for it to work. That's just not how it happens. <laughs> We're going to have new shows from uh, Gail King and Charles Barkley. They're going to have that show coming on together. And obviously that, that didn't, that, that cost a lot of money, but now, but then they also got rid of HLN and that's just airing reruns of like murder shows and sometimes the CNN thing programming for some reason. 
Uh, Dana Bash will take take on the noon show. Colin, Caitlin Collins is taking on 9 p.m. I mean, there's just so much. There's so much going on, and it just seems like there's CNN doesn't know what it's what it's supposed to be. I guess we'll find out together. Listen, if you like what you heard here, head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where I talk to comedians sometimes. I got, I just got an email about something, and hopefully that comes through. Uh, I was offered, (laughs) it's a junket, it's a junket again. I said I'll never do junkets again. I was offered three interviews. There's two I want. I guarantee on my life, I will get that third one I do not want. (laughs) And you'll never know who it is. Uh, oh, if you want to see a video version of the show, youtube.com slash C plus comedy, where you can see a video version of the other podcasts. LinkedIn Logs, which is the LinkedIn influencer business podcast. I talk about applying to jobs and LinkedIn and all that stuff. As well as uh, Late Night Lately, the Late Late Night Show show, which is on hiatus due to the writer's strike. It will continue to be on hiatus due to the writer's strike. Social. TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Chad Black White. No, oh, excuse me, at C Plus Company. And then me on those platforms, at Chad Black White. Uh, rate, review, subscribe. Tell your friends about this. Oh, also, news, uh, news time is on YouTube.com. So C Plus Comedy, which is like the Daily Show, except for this. Funny. Okay, that's it. Bye.